In this nugget, we're going to look at the human impact on the atmosphere. Let's first talk about where the atmosphere came from. For the purpose of this nugget, we will focus on carbon dioxide and water vapour, but there are more gases that you'll learn about as you move through your scientific studies. The Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago. At first it was a hot, molten ball of rock, and the atmosphere was probably made from hydrogen and helium for a short time, as these were abundant gases in the universe. As the Earth cooled, a crust formed, but the molten rock underneath would burst through. These volcanoes gave out gases such as carbon dioxide and water vapour. As the Earth continued to cool, the water vapour in the atmosphere condensed and fell as rain. This formed the oceans. Some of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere then dissolved into these new oceans. The first living things to evolve were very simple, but they developed into algae and then primitive plants that could use the carbon dioxide to make food by a process called photosynthesis. These first plants released oxygen into the atmosphere. After this, the atmosphere remained relatively stable for a while, but over the last few hundred years, human beings have removed a lot of the plant life and built cars and factories and other things that release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. What is the atmosphere? An atmosphere is a layer or several layers of gases around a planet or other large object in space like a moon. It is held in place by the gravity of the planet or the object. It's important to remember that the atmosphere of Earth is often called air. The Earth's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. There is 21% oxygen, 0.93% argon, which is a very unreactive gas, and 0.04% carbon dioxide. The remaining 0.03% is made up of very small amounts of other gases, such as water vapour, hydrogen, methane, helium and neon. Carbon dioxide is the most important gas for controlling the Earth's temperature. Greenhouse gases absorb energy, including the infrared radiation emitted by the Earth. Infrared radiation is part of the electromagnetic spectrum and is a method of heat transfer. These gases then re-emit the energy back towards the Earth. Without greenhouse gases, the Earth would be minus 18 degrees Celsius, which is 0 degrees Fahrenheit. The problem is that the more greenhouse gases there are in the atmosphere, the higher the Earth's temperature. Carbon dioxide has increased by 45% since the Industrial Revolution. Global dimming is when particles in the atmosphere reflect infrared radiation back into space. Global dimming reduces the amount of sunlight that reaches the Earth's surface. It is caused by particles in the atmosphere that come mostly from burning fossil fuels. These can counter the effects of global warming by reflecting some of the infrared radiation. But remember that all life depends on photosynthesis carried out by producers, and photosynthesis depends on light. Global dimming also disrupts the water cycle as evaporation is slowed down. Burning fuel releases carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide into the atmosphere. Humans burn forests to clear ground and we burn fuels to generate electricity, cook food, heat our homes and to power our vehicles. Burning releases carbon dioxide and sulphur dioxide into the atmosphere. When some fuels are burned, they release a gas called sulphur dioxide. Also, when air gets very hot, such as inside a car engine, nitrogen and oxygen in the air can react together to make nitrogen oxides. Both sulphur dioxide and nitrogen oxides go into the atmosphere and dissolve in rain. This makes acid rain, which damages plants, soils, lakes and buildings. Removing large areas of forest means not as much carbon dioxide is being removed from the atmosphere. Trees and plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis. About 36 soccer fields worth of trees are lost each minute due to deforestation. This means we have far, far fewer trees now than in the past. This means less carbon dioxide is being removed from the atmosphere. When carbon dioxide dissolves in the oceans, it creates carbonic acid, which decreases the pH of the water. 
a decrease in pH means it becomes more acidic. The carbonic acid affects the shells of organisms that live in the ocean, making them thinner and more fragile. Producers are organisms that make their own food using sunlight. The main producers in the ocean are microscopic organisms called phytoplankton. Increasing carbon dioxide could help them, as carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. But phytoplankton grows better in cool waters, so the rising ocean temperatures could affect them. This is important because whatever affects producers affects the whole food chain. Increased temperatures are affecting plant growth. Higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere should increase photosynthesis. But increasing temperatures and longer growing seasons stress plants. Plants are now slowing growth over the summer due to lack of water and stress plants are much more susceptible to disease and insect attack. Plants are the main producers on land, so affecting them affects the whole food chain. Dry landscapes are also much more susceptible to fire. Fire, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which makes the problem worse. Rising temperatures also affect weather patterns. It is difficult to see the impact global warming has had on weather, as weather is variable anyway. But over time, we have seen a trend in weather patterns. Rather than causing extreme weather, global warming increases the odds that it will happen. Rising air and ocean temperatures affects the water cycle in many ways, and this increases the odds of an extreme event occurring. Extreme weather events disrupt the ecosystem affected, kill animals and plants, and change the environment. Methane is a greenhouse gas. Methane from human activities is increasing global warming. It increases the heat trapped inside the Earth's atmosphere. Most of the methane in the atmosphere today is from human activities. For example, when cows pass gas from their digestive system, methane goes into the atmosphere. From one individual cow, it is not that much, but there are 1.4 billion cattle in the world because of human beings. Rice paddy fields also release methane as the wet, boggy ground needed for rice is also a good place for methane-producing bacteria to live. Other sources of methane are drilling for fossil fuels, dumping waste in landfills and thawing ice caps. It is a vicious circle. Global temperature rising is causing the ice caps to melt, which is releasing more greenhouse gases, which is warming the earth even further. To summarise, some greenhouse gases are vital to maintain the Earth's temperature so life can exist. Humans are increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and this is affecting many ecosystems. Oceans are becoming more acidic and warmer. This is affecting weather patterns and the water cycle. Keywords Environment, the conditions surrounding an organism. Producer an organism that makes its own food using sunlight. Photosynthesis, a chemical reaction that produces glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. Ecosystem, a community of organisms along with the physical environment. Atmosphere, a layer or layers of gases around a planet. Infrared radiation, part of the electromagnetic spectrum and a way of transferring heat.